right. Hey, everybody, welcome. And we are blessed this morning to have Dr. Crutchfield. Dr. Crutchfield is a long-term friend of mine in ag education. She works for National FFA. She's a local program specialist. I believe Dr. Crutchfield is the first local program specialist that I've been able to bring into class to you. To let you kind of understand uh, what that is, the National FFA organization hires, oh goodness, nine, is it five or six? I should There's have done six that now. Six specialists that are given different regions of the state and their job is to help those states access and be successful with school-based ag education on the local level. Hey, how do I use this FFA national program? Hey, what tips do you have for SAE? Really, anything they can imagine asking, and all six of them had ag teaching experience. They were the best, the best in their state. They were looking for a different way to rejuvenate their career. And so, Dr. Crutchfield, I can't remember how long have you been an LPS specialist? Nine full years now. Nine years. And before that, you taught for fourteen. Fourteen. I was going to say fifteen, but very good in Arkansas and. Since I've been teaching this class, because our philosophies do align so well, I said, Dr. Crutcher, would you share to these students about career development events? And that's why we brought her in today. So I'm going to get out of the way, let her share, and then we'll know our standard protocol to be able to, uh, obviously, I need to move the camera around a little bit. It's not working, but to line up and say hi and ask <laughs> questions and introduce yourself, okay? All right, Dr. Crutcher, that's all you. Well, good morning, everyone. Um, so... Dr. Foster wanted me to visit with you about career development events and in the process of all the technology, I think I saw hands raised. Most of you have some experience with CDE, correct? I'm curious. I haven't. 23 so how years. many of y'all have participated in a CDE either at the local district, state level or something? Okay, yeah. so nearly yeah. everyone. Okay. Um, so everybody knows what CDE stands for, correct? <clears throat> okay, so Dr. Foster gave me five, four points that he wanted me to cover today, but I'm just curious, for those of you that participated before, what do you think the purpose of CDEs are? Okay, so whoever feels comfortable answering that, I want you to come forward and make sure that you're loud and proud. Hi, Dr. Dr. Crutchfield. My name is Katie McLaughlin. I'm currently a sophomore studying agricultural science. And I think CDEs are really just kind of that experiential learning, but doing it in a way that's really related to uh, the field. So I think, it's yes, it is about, you know, doing what you can and doing your best, but it's not always about winning. It's about the experience and being able to grow from that experience. Thank you. Anyone else? Hey, Kurt's coming forward. I'll try to help keep up. Mine, it, it is a rainy, great day in Happy Valley today, so I found that we all are on the struggle bus. No problems. I'm just going to talk. Hi, I'm Kurt. I'm a junior in the College of Ag. Um, I think it's just giving students real life experience in a career field, um, whether that's something that they want to experience to see if that's what they want to do, or whether that's what they know they want to do and they just want to get more experience in it. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you for both of you. Um, you guys have hit it right, the nail right on the head. Um, when we look at the, the function, the purpose of CDEs over time, it really, it really hasn't changed very much. Uh, you're correct. The idea is to engage students in real life simulations that are related to career skill application. So thus the name, Career Development Event. Um, it's also, you mentioned, to connect students with SAEs to, that could potentially lead to a career. It's helping them explore, gain skills. Um, on the other side of that, yes, we do use it to motivate students uh, to do their best in a competition type setting because we are the U.S. and we make a competition out of everything. And so that, that motivates us to do well, excuse me, to do well in it. Um, it also allows students to engage their diverse interests. I heard Dr. Foster answering a question as I was coming back in, um, whether or not we let students choose CDEs based on interest or based on careers. And I think there's a, a balance between those two things that my own personal philosophy, and I stress this completely because I, I know um, not everybody agrees with me. So just know that this is Nina's take on CDEs. Um, 
you know, the CDE should reflect the industry in your local community. Because remember, these young people aren't going to go 50 miles outside, a 50 mile radius outside of where they grow up for the most part. So we need to be preparing them philosophically for careers that are available to them in that 50 mile radius. So don't just do CDEs because you like them or you're good at them. You need to take a look at what's around you and what could potentially lead students to careers in agriculture in their local communities, whatever that looks like. Um, and that doesn't mean that we shouldn't limit ourselves necessarily to some that perhaps aren't in our community because a lot of what we're calling now the LDEs, leadership development events, those skills transmit across all categories of careers. So we have a number of CDs that can go across those. You've got ag issues, you've got ag communications and those types of things. One of the, the best discussions I ever got into with a teacher um, a veteran teacher that was really upset that the state was about to do away with their dairy cattle uh, evaluation CD because they didn't have dairy cattle in the state anymore. And he was really upset because that would keep four kids from competing. Now you can imagine his focus wasn't exactly probably where it should have been. Uh, but the conversation just prior to that, they had talked about the ag communications CD having such low participation. So my question to him was, well, why don't you ship those four kids over into Ag Communications and give them transferable skills as, of, as opposed to dairy cattle evaluation when there's no more dairies in your state? So that's kind of that fine line as educators we kind of have to walk. Um, so that's really the ultimate purpose and function of career development events. but. Um, Dr. Foster was working with Dr. Falk at Idaho a few years back and doing some uh, coaching um, research. And I kind of had an aha moment when Dr. Falk was uh, revealing his results at a research conference. That's the intended purpose of CDEs, but that's not how teachers are using them. Teachers are using them as a way just to engage FFA members. They're not really focusing on the career aspect of that. And I think that that's leading us down the path of why we can't fill ag jobs. Uh, I tell teachers a lot of times in workshops, you know, we should be ashamed of ourselves because there's no other industry in this country that has over 10,000 recruiters talking to a million kids every day and we can't fill the jobs. So CDEs, if we approach them from that aspect, what careers are available, what are you, ex what, what are you interested in and try to funnel them that direction, I think we'll start to address that problem of a shortage of uh, people going into the industry. So teachers really need to kind of think about why I'm doing this. Is it because I love livestock? Is that why I'm training a team? Is it because I love parliamentary procedure? Is that why I'm training a team? We really have to get back to the root purpose. And I see people kind of giggling over the parliamentary procedure because I know that's Dr. Foster's favorite. Um, <laughs> that what is the purpose behind it? Are we really trying to train young people to go into the industry and be leaders in that industry? Now, additional to my own personal philosophy, and I had a very wise teacher. Um, you know, I, I came through a program where the teacher trained all 14 teams. We had 14 in our state events. Um, and so I thought that's what I had to do as a new teacher. It just about killed me. And about the second year as I was kind of sharing my frustration over that meant that much work, a, a veteran teacher, wise gentleman said, well, if you're not teaching it in class, why are you assessing it? And I, you know, it, it kind of took me back. I was like, what do you mean? Why, if I'm not teaching, I do assess what I teach in class. He said, well, if you're doing every CD, are you teaching meets in, in class? I said, well, no, I don't have a class that that applies to. And he said, then why are you doing a CDE and trying to assess learning if you're not teaching it? And so the light bulb went off and I thought, wow, that's, I'm crazy for trying to continue to do all of these. So I took a hard look at what I was teaching in class and picked the CDEs that aligned with what I was teaching. Then the next piece of that was to look for industry experts to help me. Um, you know, I learned to do, we have a state electricity contest and I learned to do that event from other ag teachers. But when my students got really good at it is when I brought a professional electrician in to help me coach the team. Go figure. 
Um, so look around for other experts in the industry to help you coach those teams so you're not trying to do it all by yourself because, you know, we, we can't be masters of everything. Um, we, we ha we're too general. There's too much information in the industry, and so it's always good to bring in someone else to help you do that. Um, and to always remember that some of these events not only are good for kids, but they're good for us. They should stimulate us for professional improvement. Uh, you know, I, I came in with a minimal knowledge of electricity. I'll use that example since I've already mentioned it. And I learned more from the teachers that were doing the event, and then I learned more from the professional electrician. So I was stretching myself and becoming a better teacher when I got out into the shop with the students to actually teach it. So we should use it that way too, not just for students, but for ourselves. And of course, the, the idea behind competition in the US, you know, not only does it meet the students' need for um, learning and, and becoming self-efficacy, the self-efficacy piece of learning, but it's also for us, for teachers. We have to remember that for a lot of our teachers, sometimes our student performance in CDEs is about the only recognition they get for an excellent job. Um, it's, we're, like, we're like the football coach. There's lots of things that are being taught on the sidelines with regard to character and, and, and technology and uh, skills, but we only get positive recognition when we win a game. And so for some teachers, this is, this is their own area for recognition and self-efficacy. And we have to kind of be careful with that because it can, it can be one of those pitfalls, and, and Dr. Foster asked me to address pitfalls, um, that can definitely be one of it. When it becomes our own measure of success as a teacher, then we really tend to be focusing on CDs, I think, for the wrong, excuse me, the wrong reasons. Um, benefits of CDs, and I, I know I'm rolling through this because you guys have got other class topics to talk to, to talk about today. Um, and at the end, if you guys have got questions, be sure to write them down and we'll, we'll just start feeling them quick fire. Um, benefits of CDEs, of course, is that ability to assess some technical skill attainment, which is huge in the education world these days. Um, people want us to actually take the CDs on the national level and give a certificate for skill attainment. The problem with that is, is it's a very small amount of skills in the industry. So we really haven't uh, gone to that level yet, but perhaps some of your state CDs may be looking, that, uh, looking at that as well. Um, the 21st century skills, you know, all the character building, all those are transferable across careers, so that's a benefit regardless of which CDE they're participating in. And it does allow students to explore in a safe environment their career interests. Um, it's a whole lot easier to figure out what you want to do through um, your exploration efforts in high school than to pay for career exploration in college, isn't it? Um, it can get pretty expensive at that level. So at the high school level, we're, we're giving kids a safe environment to do that exploration uh, of their career interest, whatever that may be. And sometimes for our students, they may figure out that it's not in the agriculture industry. And while we love having them in class, I think that perhaps we might be doing them a disservice if they truly find that their career interest lies in another career pathway that we don't counsel them to go on that career pathway. Um, so keep that in mind as well. Um, sources and strategies. Let's see. Um, I already mentioned getting help from professionals um, in the industry to help you train teams. You don't have to know everything. Um, have any of you ever looked at the CDE handbooks that we have on FFA.org? Okay, so you looked at them. I introduced them, so it's been pretty fresh. Good, good. So you know those are instructional tools. They're not just event manuals. There are instructions there for how to set up simulations, whether it's plant identification, whether it's welding, whatever the CD is. I mean, there's your their recipe for instruction right there. You can create a lab experience using those manuals. Uh, I, I think that a lot of teachers forget that that's what those can be. And not to mention, our staff spent a lot of time aligning those to educational standards. So it justifies you using them as a lesson in class. They're already there at the back of the book. There's a whole matrix that shows you what educational standards are being addressed in that particular um, event. The other piece of that in the back of those books is a resource section. 
complete your library. I mean, there's a whole list of typically of resources in the back of each one of those manuals that is additional resources for teaching students. So start collecting those items as part of your library. Um, you can see my bookshelves behind me. Uh, I just purged my library. Um, I actually realized that after 10 years, I probably wasn't going to go back to the classroom. So I loaded up all of my technical books and took them to Arkansas Summer Conference and laid them out on the table and gave them away. And so there were some great pieces there for young teachers and even some veteran teachers um, for books that were missing from their libraries. So start building that now. Um, and that doesn't mean you have to read all of them. Um, they are teaching tools as well, and a lot of uh, career development event practice and preparation is the students doing some learning on their own, so it can be great resources for them as well. Um, I mentioned don't train a team just because you like it. Um, if your community ha is never going to have um, nursery landscape industry, then probably that would not be a class you'd be teaching and it shouldn't be a CDE that you're training. So that's just my own personal take on that. Um, and those CDEs should be, and it goes the opposite direction, they should be related to your classroom instruction. So um, you all know the saying, work smarter, not harder. Um, trying to make everything fit multiple reasons for doing it is the best way to operate for us because we tend to spread ourselves out as ag teachers and then we don't get a lot done. So um, you get the sun's coming up through the window, I left if you can tell. Um, oh, and the other thing is use it, you know, I mentioned using it as teaching tools in class. Train every kid in the class, don't just train four. Um, some of the best teachers that I have seen, you know, they use those practicums in the handbooks, they, as classroom instruction, as lab activities, and so then they're training every kid in their class versus uh, just a handful of them. And I'm going to move because that sun is killing me. I don't see the ceiling in my office. Um, and what that means, too, is the fact that you then have second and third string students available for the competition. You know, you might even, if you taught a, a class of, um, we'll use livestock because nearly everybody does animal science. So you teach an animal science class and you end up teaching 30 kids the event, you might have to have a local event to determine which four are going to get to go to the district contest or to the state contest, whichever level is, is the first one for you. So that's a great problem to have. You've trained 30 kids to do one event, and that means that when that team does really well and advances to the next level, uh, we have at the national level, we see it all the time, kids that qualify as a senior in high school, they graduate, and then the teacher can't get them back. And so now they're trying to figure out who they're going to fill that team with when they come in October. Well, if you've trained 30 kids in that event, you've got lots of kids to choose from versus the senior that you're not going to see ever again. So always train more than you need so you have those backup um, for the actual event. Um, fit pitfalls, don't try to do them all. You know, as I said, you're going to burn out if you do that. Um, don't get caught up on the winning because remember, the purpose is learning. And I think a lot of our teachers get caught up on putting plaques on the wall or hanging banners or whatever the case may be in that state. Um, and they forget that the purpose is the learning behind all of that. Um, you know, so to speak, the winning is, you know, the icing on the cake. It's not the ultimate goal. And then uh, you talk about the why. I, I, we forget about talking about why we do CDEs we just go straight to it and get to the content. And so helping kids see that this, this could, is this your career interest? You know, do you think you could make money in this industry? Um, and I, I, my horse kids, I, I always told them you'll never make money, <laughs> you know, because I know that I'm a horse person. I own their money sucking pits. Only a handful of people will ever make money in that industry. Um, but you'll have all these young ladies who love horses, and that's the CDE that they want to do. And that's great if you're teaching an equine class in your program. Um, if they want to do it on their own, then let them do that on their own. That doesn't have to involve you either. Um, so I, I, 
I probably should have prefaced with that as well, is that you can do, students can do these contests on their own. You as a teacher need to focus where you are going to get the most bang for your buck. But that does, shouldn't limit students to doing what they like to do if they're willing to do it on their own. All right, so that was a whole lot of stuff that I just threw, out you, threw at you. What questions do you have? All right, let's go. Let's see if we can set this up. <clears throat> You're going to put the hot seat in there? Yeah, we usually do the hot seat. Like I said, we've been uh, struggling a little bit on where we put the camera. So there's the hot seat. And I'm going to play cameraman this time. Okay. Hot seat's empty. Who's in? Dun, dun, dun. Remember, introduce yourself, name, and what grade you're in. That helps thing. Or what year. Grade you're in. <laughs> So my question is, the last part of the strategic plan for National Day is telling our story. I feel like sometimes the story of our students in career development events and how they develop and not maybe enter the industry is sometimes lost. So is there any type of plan to maybe capture those stories so that we can better enter the industry, even outside perspectives of other students? Good question. So for us on the national level, we hunt for stories all the time. And that's one of my charges whenever I go out to the field is to really hunt for those stories and bring them back to our media folks. Um, our teachers and students are quite humble, so they often don't tell us their story so that we can share that. Uh, so. I would encourage you in the future when you're out in the field and you're teaching, you know, don't be so humble. Share those things with us. But you're correct. You know, being able to share that story of the student that starts as that freshman, works their way through the senior, finds the career they're after, relates it to their essay, participates in the CD, and then eventually ends up in the career field, we need those stories. And if you all will tell them on the local level, then that will filter up to oh, us. Wow. It's, no, 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 we're going to figure this out. <laughs> oh, <laughs> we can't hear you. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. You lost the, the other little thing. Did you notice that? What other, what other so one? when you were playing with that one, there should be another one, and you lost it. Unplug and replug the mic. Yeah. Uh -oh. I, I am going to plug this. Do Why some does good. It always, always randomly happens? Yes, yeah, okay. We're good now. Try it again. Okay, can you hear me? Yes. yes. Okay. Where did you lose me? <laughs> Just oh. heard you say, oh, all of a sudden. <laughs> a new amp in this classroom, so it occasionally goes out. and. Oh, yeah. Okay. Well, well I, I don't know where, what you missed. Uh, what did you hear the last of what yeah. I was saying? What was the last thing Dr. Crutchfield said before we lost him? Don't, don't be humble was yeah. the last thing they heard. <laughs> Okay, well, share your stories at the local level with your local papers and not just the winning of the CD. Share the process that the students went through to get there. Make it a real human interest story and then filter those up to the state level and then up to us at national level so we can feature them across our media. I don't know if y'all are aware that we do a regular podcast with RFD TV radio and it goes out all over the nation, and we constantly hunt for stories about those things. So help us out. Cool. Next. <laughs> and let's go ahead and wrap by that agenda. Let's have our next person on deck. Okay, so we can move quick and get to those questions. Hi, uh, my name is Macy Fisher. I'm a junior here at Penn State, and I'm an ag ed major. Uh, I love learning about how things differ in different states from here in PA. So I'm actually just really, really curious when you said you have 14 state career development events, what those 14 are and what you find to be the most popular one for students in that state. Okay. Well, um, our CDs were uh, very similar to most of the national ones, but we did break out the ag mechanics ones into specific areas like electricity. We had small engines. Uh, let me think, what are these some other? And then we didn't do some of them. Uh, AgCom is fairly new for Arkansas the last five years, so they've just instituted that one, and they don't do job interview. So there's just, it, it varies by state by state. I actually have a whole spreadsheet that shows all the different events that the states do. If Dr. Foster wants me, I came across it yesterday, in fact, 
Uh, if Dr. Foster wants me to email that to him and he can share it with the class, I can do that. That'd be fun. Please do. Okay. I'm going to make myself a note. All right. Go ahead. Hi, I'm Cheyenne. And I am a junior in Ag Extension Education currently. Um, you had mentioned about bringing people in if you don't know the knowledge yourself for the, a specific CDE. Do you ever find um, problems with asking people that they um, are unwilling to share their information with the students, or are they pretty excited to be able to like have the students learn from them? Most of them are really excited. Those types of events, you know, they're, that's where the ones that transfer across to content works. My, my philosophy, like, was the meets. You know, I was trying to field a meets team, but I taught that nowhere in my instructional content. Um, another one, as much as I loved dairy foods, because I was on a dairy foods team in high school, uh, I didn't teach that anywhere in a class. At that time, keep in mind, it's been 10 years since I was in the classroom, um, I didn't have food science class that wasn't a, a course in Arkansas at the time, so it wasn't like it would be part of that coursework. So you just have to balance what you're doing in class with what CDEs you're going to invest your time and effort in. Hello, my name is Hunter Kaufman. I am a sophomore studying wildlife and fisheries. Um, my question is, what do you think is the biggest struggle with implementing CDs, with getting students to participate and see the value in participating in them? Hmm, the biggest obstacle. I don't necessarily, I didn't have problems getting kids wanting to do them. My problem was getting them to practice. <laughs> you know? and, and I'm just as guilty as the next person to invest that amount of time. Um, if they're excited about being in the class, typically they're, they're excited about the content. And so if, I'm, if it's a CD related to the content that they're already interested in, it's really not usually a problem finding students. And as I said, if you're teaching the entire class these things, these skills, then it makes it a whole lot easier to um, either, if you've got a lot who want to do it, you're going to have to have some way to sift out and pick out your best four to do the contest at the next level. Or, you know, if they're just, they're kind of not confident in their abilities to pick the four and say, hey, you, you ought to think about doing this event. We've got this contest next Saturday that I just think you would be awesome at. And a lot of times that's all it takes for kids is for someone to say, hey, you should do this. Um, and that's in everything, not just CDEs. Uh, you know, you're never going to get a kid to raise their hand and say, I want to be your creed speaker. I mean, they're freshmen, 7th, 8th graders. They're not confident in standing up front of you. You are going to have to push that student to say, you're going to be my creed speaker. Here's the event. We're going to practice after school or before school, whatever the, the schedule allows. Monday through Friday, you know, leading up to it, and you're going to do it. And they're going to cry, and they're going to say, I don't want to do it. I'm not very good at it. And you're going to say, nope, nope, you're good. You're, you're my creed speaker. You're going to do it. And so a lot of those students, you may have to push into those speaking ones especially. Um, and, of course, those are the same kids that by the time they're a senior, you wish you could put duct tape on them because they won't shut up. Do we have any other questions? Okay, at this time, Dr. Crutchfield, uh, I want, I'm going to take this time for you to share any last thoughts you might have. Uh, I, you are not just a CD specialist, while I feel that you carry a lot of confidence in that area. Um, and we're looking at 23 students who, some are ag ed majors, some are agri-science majors, but all care about youth and agriculture. And I don't yeah. know if you could leave any final thoughts or words of wisdom with them. Well, and, and I'll, if, if there's a particular topic, Dr. Foster, they're interested in, want me to expand on in the blog, I can do that for you. I probably won't be as thorough as Jenna was with the National Chapter Award piece, but um, if there's something that's burning that they just would like for me to expand on, I'll be glad to do that. Last words of wisdom, um, always have fun. If, you, if you're not having fun, the kids are not having fun, and they're not going to keep signing up for your class. They're not going to, they're going to be problems. You have got to, and even on the days where you don't feel like having fun, you fake it till you make it, because it really means a lot for those kids. For you know, Remember, you're an elective. You're not required. And so they have to want to come to your class every day. Um, the other piece of advice I would say is don't overload anything you do with too many girls, okay? 
way too much drama when you have more girls than you have boys in anything, whether it's a team, an officer team, or whatever. I'm just saying. <laughs> just saying. Balance and diversity is good of all things. So, yes. um, I, I don't remember, Nana, what was your favorite? Everybody has their favorite, even though we try to hide it. <laughs> Some people know my favorite's probably pro. But what was your favorite career development event? Oh, I loved horse equine, uh, and that's just because I'm a horse person, but I spent a lot of time after school with four, ki four or five kids in the truck, and we would just drive around and look at horses in pastures and evaluate, and I mean, that's, and of course, in the equine class, I had every kid on a stick horse running patterns out in front of the school, which everybody thought we were crazy, probably. Uh, we had a lot of fun, and the equine class, and then t doing the horse CD was always probably my favorite. Yeah, that's fun. And I'm gonna bet though, of all your horse judging teams, I'm gonna bet that the vast majority were female. Um, no, it was about fifty-fifty most of the time. You know, I had the female kids in there too. So. All right, uh, so you, that's yeah. unique. Cause, you know, when I go out and look at the national horse judging uh, contest, <laughs> for yeah, sure, it's mostly girls. <laughs> but yeah, of course, and it could have been that the boys figured out the girls were in that class, and so that's what they signed up for. Who knows? The, the smart ones did. The smart yeah, ones yeah, did. that's how I always got boys on my floriculture team. They figured out that's where all the girls were at CD contest day. So there you go. Yeah, they were and probably the smarter ones than that were in the ag met class. <laughs> and that's a cost savings because uh, when it came to prom, they could make their own course huh? So uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know if that happened or not, but. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I really appreciate your time. It's always a pleasure to bring you in. So thank you for um, taking time out of your day early, because remember, she's an hour behind us, to join uh, the ha us in Happy Valley and our Penn State students. Yeah, well, time zones don't mean anything to me right now. So I appreciate you guys having me. Thank you. I'll see you down the road. All right. Bye, y'all.